we've held a lot of go to conferences across the world and collaborated with some of the top creators and innovators within software. In this brand new go to book club, we give you key takeaways from the masters themselves in the form of interviews revolving around books they've created. Learn strategies and how to become a more efficient developer as we dive into the first online series of our go to book club. This episode is brought to you by Erlang Solutions, reliably controlling the messaging for more than 2 billion WhatsApp users. Welcome to the Go to Book Club. Welcome to Season 1, welcome to Episode 1. And welcome to you, Eric. Eric Schoen, author of the book, The Art of Strategy. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. Eric, your book is referring to some interesting individuals. I'm sure we will get back to that later. But just before we start, I would like to ask you, why did you write this book? What problem does it solve? Preben, that's a very good question. I think the, the problem it solves is about how to be certain to succeed, how to be certain to win. Uh, that's the, the essence of the book. And um, that's the essence of these three great strategists, Sun Tzu, Boyd and Wardley. With us today, we have CEO of Trifork, Jan Larsen, founder of the GoTo Conferences. Jan, please take it from here. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for coming today for this uh, book interview. And we will talk a lot about your book here. And um, so first of all, I'd like to ask you, what made you write this book and what made you choose those three people that you have been uh, taking your inspiration from? Yes, so I've always been fascinated by strategy and I've been doing it on and off for the past 20 years in startups, scale-ups and in, in large corporations. And I always like learning and learning from the best. And uh, these three gentlemen are really the best in the business of strategy. So Sun Tzu from 2,500 years ago in, in China, how to be certain to, to win without fighting. John Boyd, the, the American strategist of the late 19th century or sorry, 20th century, with his famous uh, observe, orient, decide, act loop. And then, of course, Simon Wardley with, with the Wardley maps that help you visualize strategy to make better choices and decisions on, on how to win. Takeaway number one, learn from the best, make the right choices. My second question will be about strategy. What is strategy? When I meet people, uh, they, they talk about strategy, how important it is. But sometimes I feel less certain that they really know what it's all about. Can you explain what is a strategy, why you need it, and how you make one? Yeah, let's start with why you need it. Um, why? Always start with why, right? So um, I think in this, this world we live in, it's very much volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And the rate of change will, will never be slower than today. And in such a world, it's really important to have a direction to have your, your choices of what to do and what not to do, to not get distracted and sidetracked, to get focus. And I think that's really, really important when it comes to developing your strategy, making those choices and making those decisions. With an element of, of positive surprise, which we learned from Sun Tzu, I think from Boyd we learn uh, the importance of, of harmonizing um, the direction and harmonizing all the people in your organization so everyone is taking decisions, taking actions, taking initiatives in the same direction, in a harmonized direction. So everyone is doing that all across the organization. And in order to do that, you need to know the direction and you need to know where, where you're going. So, so I think those two parts are, are really important. Developing your strategy, making the choices, and then deploying your strategy, making it happen by all the people everywhere in an organization. So they make wise decisions and actions and take initiatives in this right direction. Takeaway number two. The strategy helps you to know what and what not to do to stay focused in a volatile and complex world. My next question goes along um, right action. You mentioned the two words right action a number of times in your book and also OODA. Maybe you can explain a bit more about this. Yes, sure. Right action. Uh, let's start with the OODA. I have a little illustration here. That's the famous ODA loop by John Boyd. And uh, 
It may look a bit complex, but it's quite simple. It's about, you know, observe what's happening. Uh, it's about orienting yourself. Then it's about deciding and acting. Then you loop around. This is a simple loop, which is slightly more complex than that, but let's, let's for the sake of simplicity, it's a simple loop. So by observing the world around you, get, you get situational awareness. Uh, then you orient yourself and, and you know, you, you use your expertise, your uh, background uh, in order to make a decision and then you take action. And the important thing with this loop, since it is a loop, that you do it more skillfully, for example, faster than competition. And by looping around faster and faster, you will get bigger and bigger advantage compared to, to your competitors. And those right actions will of course happen because you, you take the time to observe and orient, preferably in a team, so you get even more perspectives, different perspectives, in order to make the right decision and the right actions. And then the feedback loop, the learning loop, back to observe, back to orient, decide and act. And you do that time and time again, and you do it faster than competition or better than competition, you just leave them in the dust. Third takeaway, stay ahead of competition by following the ODA loop. Observe and orient, then take the right action. Did you know that Erlang software is involved in 40% of all global mobile network traffic? So my next question goes along the art of war. It was written 2500 years ago. What can we learn from that today? What can we learn from Sun Tzu 2500 years later? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I think uh, it's it's about how to how to succeed and how to be certain to succeed and how to be certain to succeed even without um, engaging with competition without fighting so to speak and doing that by influencing and shaping the market uh, competition and even your customers slightly so you influence in a positive way the environment and I think that's something we can learn from these days, because sometimes we're so flexible and adaptable, which is good, of course, uh, but it's also an element of proactivity where you, you work to, to influence and shape uh, both competition, um, customers and the market in, in general. So I think that's a great learning for these days as well. Takeaway number four. Sun Tzu believed that in order to succeed without engaging competitors, you need to be proactive and not only adapt. You influence and you shape your competition and customers. Sun Tzu and the Art of War is a very famous book. It has been around for hundreds of years, thousands of years. And then you also look at, at Simon Wardley and the Wardley maps. And I am sure for many of the um, attendees here, they might not really know what that's all about. Can you explain what is a Wardley map and how do you draw one? Yeah, um, Wardley maps are maps, obviously, and maps you have to navigate a, a landscape. Um, here it's not uh, your traditional geographical landscape, it's your business and technology landscape. So you want to visualize uh, an evolving technology and business landscape. And that you do in order to help developing, communicating, uh, deploying strategy in a better way in your organization. So that's sort of the... the the what and why about it. And here we have a little worldly map. So um, it's two axes. It's sort of the the axis with where you have your value chain uh, and the axis of evolution. And uh, it's really a, a simple value chain starting with a customer and the customer need. In this case, it's a customer who wants to do online photo handling, uh, photo manipulation, photo storage. And uh, that's of course possible to do and you see the different components that are needed uh, in order to make this happen uh, and you have more visible things up here like you you work with your online uh, photo manipulation and storage then you have things like your your uh, customer relationship management system your your web uh, server your your uh, data servers all the way down to electricity uh, so that's just the, the different components that, that make up this, this service that serves the customer need. And I think the, the important thing is also the evolution. These components can be in different stages. So you have stages like Genesis, something completely new. 
you have something which is more of a product, you have something which is more of custom built, you have something which is a commodity. We have sort of electricity, uh, which is a typical commodity down here. So when you have this map, you can start seeing where things are going. You can start anticipate where technology is going. You can start anticipating customer needs. You can uh, start making choices where to attack competition or where to, to uh, move your, your people uh, and what to focus on and what not to focus on. You can make decisions on what to build yourself. You can make decisions on what to outsource and what to buy. So this these kinds of maps are really magic. They help you so much to see what what the landscape is and make those choices. And then you can help them uh, use them to communicate to your your organization what what you're doing and why you're doing it. Takeaway number five: Use Wortley maps to anticipate where technologies are going, where customer needs fit in, and where to attack competitors. That was about navigation and, and creating your map. Then you have a chapter about shaping. And maybe you can elaborate on shaping, shaping the customer, shaping the market, shaping your competition. So this sounds very proactive and action-oriented. Can you, can you explain some more about shaping, what you mean? Yeah, um, that's one of the key takeaways from, from both uh, Boyd, Wardley and Sun Tzu. Um, and what it's all about is, is having game plays that, that influence uh, the market and competition. And in the book, you know, there's like 10 examples and I, we don't have time to go through all of them. But I think some of them are, are pretty interesting. Um, for example, feature drops where you drop new features at, at a steady rate. Uh, and in that way, you leapfrog competition and you sort of uh, influence them and they have to be following you uh, and you are the leader, for instance. We have a, a, another example of, of sort of shaping the market recently with, with Zoom, where they uh, were sort of um, sort of being slightly attacked by, by competition, saying that there were various um, security flaws and, and other flaws with the product. And those are sort of misinformation maneuvers and misdirection and signal distortion that, that uh, competition can do uh, to sort of discredit um, you, um, in this case, Zoom. Um, so th these are a couple of examples of, of how to, to influence the market. Not always positive, but um, you know, business is all, not always um, that, that nice of a game. There, there are some elements of, of shaping and influencing there, of course. Takeaway number six, you shape the market, you influence the competition by following the series of 10 gameplays. You can find the full list in the book. You call these uh, gameplays, so misdirection and tech drops and first mover. That's some of the gameplays you mentioned in the book and explain and what you yeah. also just explained here. Then you have a chapter on adaptions, being able to adapt to a certain situation. So where shaping is where you have to act, then being adaptive is, is another beast of its own. Can you please explain more about the, uh, the importance of adapt? Sure. As, as we talked about earlier, the, the, the world is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous, and, and the rate of change will never be slower than today. And in such a world, it's super important to, to be adaptable to what your customer wants and what your competitors are doing and where the market is moving, because you cannot control everything. Uh, even if you can influence and shape uh, that we just talked about, uh, you know, your competitors, your customers, um, they have a will of their own. They have their purpose. They have their direction. And uh, you just need to be mindful of that and, and be ready to adapt your moves and actions and decisions, of course. So I think that's, that's one part of, of being adaptable. Then another even more difficult part of it is, is to be able to sense uh, that your successful maneuvers uh, maybe won't be successful forever so that you can break out of those successful patterns that you've been applying for many years even before uh, it's too late so that you in a sense can anticipate and see around corners so, so that's another aspect of, of being adaptable um, in order to 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 stay alive and thrive for for not only tens of years but hundreds of years even 
Takeaway 7. A business is a living thing. It's important to be able to break out of successful patterns once you've done everything you could to adapt and prepare. While you've been watching this episode, Erlang Software has supported the transmission of more than 150 million SMS messages worldwide. Thank you, Eric. That was some really good takeaways. And one of my good friends, he lives in Zurich, he says, um, you actually have to read a book three times before you get it, the fullest out of it. So uh, for sure, I will read it one more time. Thank you so much, Eric, for coming today and good luck with the book. Thank you, Jörn. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure.